The year is 1943. Nachos and the deep dish pizza are invented. America and the Allies are at the height of World War II with Japan and the Axis powers. The musical Oklahoma is released, and people just love it. It was a simpler time, a more racist time, a time that birthed the first on-screen appearance of Batman. The 1943 serial The Batman, starring Lewis Wilson as Batman and Douglas Croft as Robin, is, to put simply, a product of its time, in that it really hates Japanese people. Uh, Jap you see, after the attack on Pearl Harbor, some irrational fears begin to manifest nationwide about Japanese people and their ties to their enemy homeland. So in 1942, Franklin D. Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066, which resulted in the internment of about 120,000 innocent Japanese Americans. And unfortunately, most of America was pretty cool with it. So, sadly, during this time, it was fair game to put anti-Japanese propaganda in everything. Cartoons, posters, advertising, comic strips, dehumanizing, bigoted, racist videos and images of Japanese people were totally hip and in. So when I tell you that the plot of the 1943 Batman was about Batman being a secret US government agent on a mission to stop a Japanese supervillain from liberating innocent prisoners from internment camps to help overthrow America, it makes sense in that terrible 1943 kind of way. And golly, it's really something. I am Dr. Daka, humble servant of His Majesty Hirohito, heavenly ruler and prince of the rising sun. By divine destiny, my country shall destroy the democratic forces of evil in the United States to make way for the new order. An order that will bring about the liberation of the enslaved people of America. The Japanese supervillain Dr. Daka, played by a very white J. Carroll Nash in Yellowface, is the first on screen Batman villain. Fun fact. Pre production posters actually showed Nash was originally going to be the Joker, and the change seemed to be a last second patriotic decision because he still wore similar clothes and operated out of a carnival, which is, you know, pretty jokery. Daka's carnival, however, was in 1943's Deserted Little Tokyo, which the narrator explains in one of the most memorable scenes. This was part of a foreign land transplanted bodily to America and known as Little Tokyo. Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it has become virtually a ghost street. Yeah, uh, so anyway, I, I think I've established that 1943 Batman is racist. But what else is 1943 Batman? What else? Not much, honestly. Step his face. <laughs> Step back. Are you Jap devil? So for the sake of keeping this video semi-interesting, let me just say a few random things and fun facts about the 1943 serial to help paint a better picture, and then you you guys can decide at home whether or not you want to pick it up from Blockbuster this weekend. Uh, and yeah, you know, I guess that'll be the rest of the video. Um, Alright, the, the villain Dr. Daka uses this machine to brainwash people and make them do his evil Japanese bidding. His list of brainwashed zombies includes Batman's love interest's uncle. And boy, did that guy love America. Listen, Daka, or whatever your name is, I owe my allegiance to no country or order but my own. I'm an American first and always, and no amount of torture conceived by your twisted oriented brain will make me change my mind. But even his intense love of the red, white, and blue is no match for Dr. Daka's nefarious fog machine brainwashing thing. Uh, what other thing? What do we got here? What do we got here? Do, do, do. This serial had the first appearance of the Batcave, which is cool. Um, it was actually known as the Bats Cave. The Bats Cave instead of the Bat Cave. Um, it also has the first appearance of Skinny Alfred. He was fatter in the comics before. First time he was skinny. 19. 
43. The setting is in Los Angeles instead of Gotham City, um, which is different. Uh, here's a good one. Dr. Daka feeds people alive to his pet alligators. <laughs> Okay, okay, what else? Uh, hmm. uh, the actor playing Batman was 23 years old, and the actor playing Robin was 16, making them both the youngest Batman and Robin to ever be on screen. And when I found that out, I was like, really, this guy is 23? This guy? 23? I don't know. Uh, it's just uh, people just looked older back then, I think. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? Tell me in the... Tell me in the comments. Do you think that guy... I would have said like 30 something, maybe. I don't know. Didn't look 23 to me, but... Tell me in the comments below. All right, this video isn't going anywhere. It's kind of a mess, you know. I mean, it, I, like I started writing and I was like, okay, put that it's racist. And then after that, I was like, you know, what do I, what do I say now? Like, what else is there to say about 1943 Batman? It's, it, it, it's super racist. And then after that, it's just kind of, you know, you know. Uh, okay, let's just spin the wheel of fun facts. Name one more uh, to wrap this up. Okay, let's do it. Spin the wheel, baby. Spin that wheel. Come on, big money, big money, big money. All right, here we go. Another fun fact. Oh, okay. This one's about Robin. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, the actor who played Robin, Douglas Croft, died when he was 37 years old from acute alcohol intoxication and liver disease at a hotel down the street from 20th Century Fox's Hollywood Studios 16 years after his acting career ended. Oh Jesus, that's not fun. That's not a fun fact at all. And I'm um, this just fuck. It's, it's depressing. Um, listen, I I would not recommend anyone ever watch 1943 Batman. Believe me, all the good parts were in my video. Unless you want to check the sick fights where nobody ever loses their hats. You know. Uh, so yeah, please comment, like, subscribe. Ring that bell, and maybe don't let your kid be a child actor while you're at it. Doesn't usually end up the greatest, so. Tell me what I should do for my next video in the comments below. All right, good goodbye.